Hi everyone, welcome to Art Potter's Gallery. My name is Melvin and today I'll take you on a virtual tour of our gallery's room 2 where we are currently having a mix hang featuring works from various artists from Southeast Asia. Uh, they are emerging artists and we have a wide range of works to share with you. And what you're seeing here is the mission of the gallery, sharing happiness with art. And so let's proceed to our room two, which is down the stairs. And usually in this space, we would have a mixed hang of these different artists, and we would change the works every now and then. So if you see any works that you like, uh, please feel free to contact us through Telegram, through WhatsApp, or even through email and we are happy to share more information with you. So for this tour, um, I'd like to start with the Indonesian artist Muyana and on the wall you see his work. Um, Muyana is based in Jogja, Indonesia and he is a visual artist that is famous for his soft sculptures and he is also famous for uh, being an art teacher um, where he teaches women back in his village how to knit and crochet and so on the wall you see one of his uh, very famous sea coral soft sculpture in 2018 he has a giant installation of uh, these sea corals and the installation is titled Sea Remembers and it actually made headlines for uh, as one of the memorable highlights in Art Job back in 2018. So his work centers around the theme of community and also the awareness of the sea ecosystem and pollution. If you take close a uh, closer look at the sculpture you will notice there is an octopus figure that is hidden amongst the corals. Uh, this is called a mogus and is actually the artist uh, alias. And every different sea coral of his will come with this special identity, its own mogus. Okay, moving on to our second artist. On this wall, I'd like to introduce to you Jamie Teo. She is a young Singaporean artist and she is also the winner of the 2019 um, UOB Painting of the Year Award Silver Prize winner. So for Jamie, she meticulously blends oil paints onto canvas and her art is about exploring how colours interact with one another in the canvas but also out of it so she has a very trademark style where she has this really smooth gradient but also if you look at the details you will notice some build up of paints this is also another signature character of her paintings um, it not only creates a focal point where the eye can rest upon but in tandem with the smooth gradient, it provides a dynamic rhythm as you view the whole composition. Her works are also very interesting for collectors because she believes that colours interact out of the canvas. So there is no right or wrong way of orientation to hang her works. She encourages collectors to hang as creatively as possible. And in this sense, you can even mix and match her works and allow different colours to flow from one canvas to the other. In that sense, she's giving you the power to interact with colours using her works. Moving on to the third artist, I'd like to introduce Yan Yun Chen. She's a local artist and she's a specialist in charcoal drawings. She was also one of the President Young Talents finalists in year 2018 
and her exhibition at Singapore Art Museum 8Q, titled The Scars That Write Us, has garnered the most votes by members of the public and she won the People's Choice Award. She is also the winner, uh, one of the winners of the prestigious 2019 Art Outreach in Part Visual Artist Award, alongside uh, another of our artists, Priya Gita Dia. So, her drawings, uh, they focus primarily on the hum human anatomy. However, she also draws uh, flowers. Flowers is also one of her main subjects. And in 2018, she had a solo exhibition with us titled Flower Flights, where she pushes the boundary of charcoal drawing by exploring different mediums uh, to draw on. So, as you can see, um, she draws on many different mediums, like charcoal paper, Japanese linen, and even on wood, such as this piece. And in more recent times, uh, very recently she also had a solo exhibition um, at Sea Focus Art Fair uh, titled False Truths, where she uses um, the technique of still life. She challenges the, the perception of still life and in a very contemporary sense, like how do you use such a traditional technique to convey or tackle contemporary issues. So, very intelligently, she does still life drawings of both artificial flowers and real flowers together and presented in a still life manner. So, in this sense, when you're looking at her, her painting, her drawings now, you cannot tell what is real and what is fake. And this is parallel to receiving like fake news from the media. So let's have a close-up look on her details. Alright, so, so moving on to the next artist, I'd like to introduce to you a Thai artist by the name of Kitty Kong. He's also a printmaker and an abstract painter. So in his works, um, he uses a very special paper that is native to uh, Thailand and this paper is called Sa paper. Sa paper is made from a type of mulberry plant called the Sa plant and its pulp is um, used to create this paper where traditionally in Chiang Mai, Thailand, it is used to uh, make umbrellas and lanterns so you can say Kitty Kong's work, they are a good balance of contemporary and traditional. You see a very modern look in his work um, while he explores very traditional medium. And as an abstract painter, he feels that colours, they evoke different things in different people through their life experiences. For example, when you look at blue, it might trigger a memory uh, from you and it can mean very different things to a person from Japan to another in, let's say, Singapore due to cultural differences. So I'd like to introduce to you the second series of Kitty Kong's work um, with this series titled Memorizer. So as previously mentioned, um, for the artist, he believes that colours evoke different emotions in people uh, via their different experiences in lives. And he also believes that um, we are all memorizers because we learn mostly by heart rather than memory. And this is something that is uh, probably more true for colours. We feel colours rather than um, to explain colours, so to speak. And one interesting fact is that uh, the Colour Playground series earlier, the artist was actually inspired um, while he was waiting for the birth of his child 
he anticipated what color would associate with um, his newborn baby. And so those colors were created, those works were created with the colors of uh, anticipation. However, for memorizer series, um, these works were created after his newborn child was born. And as you can see, the colors are much more uh, richer. And it was not what he anticipated. He did not expect um, the colors to turn out so rich and vibrant. It's way more than what he had thought it would be. And so these works, they are acrylic on canvas works. And let's take a closer look at the details. You will notice on the surface, it is uh, covered with a gloss. So that is actually lacquer. The artist actually layered a lot of lacquer on top. It's a very tedious process. Um, but the results are very beautiful. He also selects specially selected uh, thick wood frames for each work. I'd like to introduce to you Chloe Manasse. She is a British artist uh, based in Singapore. And we have two works here on the back of our gallery too, on the blue walls. So, Chloe was invited by the British High Commission to showcase a series of works from 21st Jan to 21st May 2019. And the exhibition is titled The Fruitfulness of Forgetting. And it is inspired by Eden Hall, the historical bungalow where her late grandfather Ezekiel Manasse was born and Eden Hall is currently the residence of the High Commissioner of uh, Britain. So, as she was commissioned to do works um, for Eden Hall, her works, they sit between experience and imagination, where she imagines um, her, her late grandfather, how life was like in Eden Hall. Um, so she had her own personal experiences um, with her grandfather as well, but not with the space of Eden Hall until uh, very recently. So Eden Hall is also situated very near to Botanical Gardens, um, where there are a lot of uh, vibrant flora and fauna, which is very much reflected in her works. And these works, as you can see, um, they are painted very vibrant as well. And in the fruitfulness of forgetting the exhibition, the works are actually contextually placed in different areas of Eden Hall, the bungalow. So we have works in the ballroom, we have works in the study room, etc. etc. And it comes in many different uh, shapes and sizes. So let's take a closer look at the work. So as previously mentioned, you can see many aspects of uh, flora and fauna, of birds and a very tropical looking plants. And in Eden Hall itself, it really enchants the whole place. It's as if the place have, has come to life with Chloe's works. We have uh, some new works from Chloe. Um, we have compiled all of her most recent works into a new catalogue. So if you'd like to know more about her works, uh, her new works as well, please feel free to approach us and let us know and we'll gladly share with you the catalogue with prices. The next artist I'd like to introduce is Ayman, a local artist who has painted for over 10 years. For Ayman, his works are a mix of surrealism and hyperrealism, and they are very layered with many symbolisms uh, inspired by Greek, uh, Eastern and Western mythologies, and also real life. For Ayman, he also uh, he did a solo exhibition with us 
in 2018. And the title of the exhibition is called uh, The Evolution of A.N. and A.N., where he explores duality. His works, they are often infused with uh, many aspects of duality. And you also notice uh, portals being depicted in his work because he believes that there is an inner world and an outer world. You will notice the use of birds in the painting. It is very interesting because uh, birds are very important to Ayman. Uh, when he was young, he was attacked by a bird before, so he is actually afraid of birds or any creature that flies. However, he challenges the perspective of the audience because when we look at birds, I believe most of us see them as icons of peace or something that is uh, very cheerful and not frightening. However, to Ayman, it's something horrific. And so his works with uh, the duality, as I've mentioned, they also challenge perspective. And another way um, you can see the bluebirds, I believe he hints it as social media as well, such as Twitter. And at the bottom of the painting, over here, you can see a security camera of sorts, um, which is yet another way of uh, depicting how people view um, one another through different lenses. So for this work that you are, you are currently looking at, it is a new work titled Collecting Clear Blue Skies for a Cloudy Day but try bottling up the sunlight. So with this title, uh, I've yet to mention, but Ayman is also a poet. He likes to name all of his titles um, very poetically. The next work we have is titled Man's Main Task is to give birth to himself, but purification is necessary. So once again, in this work, you can see portals. You can see birds as well. Finally, I'd like to introduce Chok Yuezhan. He's a young Malaysian artist, a very talented one, uh, who won the UOB Painting of the Year Award, first prize in Malaysia in the year 2018. So Zan, he owns a very special technique. He not only paints, but he sculpts within his painting. For instance, if you look at the detail of this painting, you'll realize that it is being carved. But this is by no means a wood carving. It is a normal art canvas. So how he achieves this carving is actually to first layer approximately 11 to 12 layers of acrylic paint onto the canvas after which he paints the surface of the painting with oil paint and finally he carves the surface of the canvas exposing the previously established uh, acrylic paint layer so this is a very unique uh, technique from the artist which is very consistent with. He also has a very powerful story to tell, which is about family and where he grew up. So Zan, although he's based in Kuala Lumpur right now, he actually grew up in Sabah, where he was raised by his late grandmother. And to him, Sabah was a paradise filled with very green um, jungles, beautiful oceans. However, things changed. His uh, late grandmother passed away and Sabah was also undergoing a huge change as people start to do construction works. And so, as you're looking at this um, artwork, you will notice there's, a, there's an outline, a silhouette, of these three figures 
they are actually based off of um, old photographs, old family photographs of Zan. And these are actually his parents. And he is being carried by them. So he uses negative space um, with the carving and the silhouette to express melancholy of this change that he was experiencing. Rather than um, having a very negative outlook of this uh, change, Zan is actually inspired by um, these memories which he considers very beautiful and he cherishes them. And it makes him appreciate the everyday even more. This work, it depicts the lush forest of Sabah. And in the middle, there is this um, negative space, this acrylic block that is being carved out. And this white acrylic, uh, it actually resembles the texture of a tree bark. And if you look at the surrounding of the forest in detail, it is intentionally not painted very sharp because he relates it back to the human memory, like how once we grow older and through time, our memory is not going to be as sharp anymore, but we still know the feeling, we still remember the memory. And going back to the first work, the artist very masterfully creates a, a chain of events, or rather there is a cycle to his work. He compares the environment to the human memory. For instance, when it rains in Sabah, the rain would first hit the mountain and then it flows down into the river which eventually goes out to the, the ocean and the ocean eventually evaporates as cloud and then it condenses into rain again which restarts the cycle so he sees it as the same with human memory we go through life make new experiences we have memories that we treasure but slowly they start to fade away as we make new ones and it is always going to be like a cycle. So we hope you have enjoyed the short little tour. Once again, we have works from Muyana from Indonesia, Jamie Teo from Singapore, Yin Yin Chen from Singapore, Kitty Kong from Thailand, Chloe Manasse from Britain, Ayman from Singapore, Chok Yuezhan from Malaysia. The gallery would be closed um, starting from next Tuesday, 7 April for a month with the new measures uh, from the government. However, if you are interested in any of these works, please do not hesitate to reach us once again through Telegram, through WhatsApp or even email. Yeah. Thank you.